Greetings to you all brothers and sisters in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm greatly delighted once again come back to you with God's uh, wonderful message. It has been a glorious joy for me always have the privilege of bringing God's wonderful message to God's chosen seed. We are once again thankful to you all brothers and sisters spread across the whole world sending numerous messages to me and I'm thankful to God that he's touching many people and awakening the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ for the hour that we are living in. Uh, I'm uh, immensely thankful to you all, not only the messages and appreciations and many responses that I regularly receive. Uh, I see how the Lord is really taking this message across to a uh, chosen seed across the whole world and I'm only thankful to God that not only me there are many other servants of God like me who are spread across the whole world fulfilling that task that is directly assigned by none other than the living God. Brothers and sisters uh, it has been a glorious journey for me that walking with him and when I get up in the morning at five o'clock and I go to the beach and spend nearly two hours one and a half, and a half hours on walking a huge stretch of beach which we have thankfully to God uh, that and then uh, meditating and in the process how the Lord is uh, speaking to me and I'm able to communicate with him this is a privilege all the children of God has, not only me. Because our God is not a small deity that can be put inside a box or a cathedral or a temple or a covil or a mosque or a, uh, any other place. No, he is not a tiny little puny little God or a deity. He is a living God. The Almighty Adonai Elohim El Shaddai Yahweh. He created this whole universe, which is 14 billion years old. And this universe is awesome and vast, complex, and yet very well synchronized, organized, harmonized, and operations are precision in timing. So, brothers and sisters, it is so wonderful that we can reach our living God anywhere, anytime, in any place. There is no restrictions at all. Unlike the, the gods of the heathens, there is no specific time, there is no specific place, there is no specific moment to meet our God. Today is the day, the now is the time, wherever you are, Lift up your eyes, you can enable him to understand you. Bible says, his ear is not heavy, no his hand is short. That's the kind of God. And the Bible also says, the God of Israel neither sleep nor slumber. There is no day and night. God of Israel neither sleep nor slumber. He doesn't get tired of listening, hearing and discussing, communicating with you and me. So brothers and sisters, we are presenting to you the almighty living God, the omnipotent, omnipresence, omniscience, one the living God. Beside him there are no other gods. There is no trinity of gods. God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, nothing like that. You are the Lord God of Israel, one God, Jesus said. Beside me there are no other gods. God is a spirit. God is not an image which can be visualized. He is the almighty, omnipotent, omnipresence, omniscient spirit. 
brothers and sisters, we must worship Him in spirit and truth, the Bible says. There is no other way to worship Him, in spirit and in truth. So that's what we are presenting to you, brothers and sisters. Not a subjective God, not restrictive God, no, the Almighty, the Almighty who created the whole universe. If you can understand the, 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 the way of the universe, you will understand the way of the, the living God. As I told many times, this universe is 14 billion years old. Over 2 trillion galaxies so far founded by the scientists. And we are part of a galaxy called Milky Way. In that Milky Way, there is a small arm called Orion. In that arm only, we have our solar system of 10 planets. And the latest telescope that was sent about a month ago would now identify probably more galaxies. Maybe 5 trillion, 10 trillion. Who knows? Can you imagine how Wonderful is the universe. There are universal laws that are operating. Scientists only know less than 10% of it. That's why this universe is so complex, yet well organized, well synchronized, well harmonized in precision timing. Not only the universal laws, but God's mathematical formulas in operation. That's why the orbits of the ten planets working on precision timing not for thousand years, not for ten thousand years, not even for hundred, millions, millions and millions of years. That require precision timing. Brothers and sisters, now most of the scientists in the modern scientists, not like ancient scientists, like Darwin and various others who found certain things. But the modern scientists are very open-minded. And they are understanding the universe. More and more they understand. They say, the universe cannot be an automatic happening. It has never evolved accidentally. They always say, these scientists say, the universe and the activation even currently taking place cannot take place without, without the design of an a intelligent being. Because, because it is to such extent, everything is taken care of, the operations. And the more and more happenings in the universe, the scientists identify more miraculous things which they cannot even fathom and give an answer. All in all, they say there's so much of synchronization, so much of organization, so much of precision timing, it has to be an intelligent being that has said this whole thing, created this. Scientists are still grappling with it. And that's why they finally came and said, the Big Bang is responsible for the, the creation of the, the universe, 14 billion years ago. Then they asked the cause of the Big Bang. The cause of the Big Bang is God particle. They say God particle. They don't say God because they don't want to directly attribute that to God. You know scientists? They have a little bit of pride to really seeing that if we attribute to God that their scientific uh, nature will be gone. You know, everything that is God is not science. That's the perception. But modern scientists are not like that. They are understanding this very well. The more they know, more they understand the universe, more they see the complexity of it. More they see the organization of it more they see the synchronization of it, more they see the harmonization of it, 
more they see the precision timing of it, more they see and say, this has to be a most intelligent mind that has put these things in place. And that is none other than our living God. Brothers and sisters, if the universe is 14 billion years old, in compared to tiny little time space that we are living in, our physical age is about 100, maximum 120 years. We are talking about 6,000 of civilization of the human beings since the, the Adam. Thereafter, Noah's flood, the Mesopotamia, and the Noah three sons spreading the whole planet earth. So, brothers and sisters, that's why I say, we are not putting across to you a religion. I am not part of a religious system. Definitely not. I am coming from a religious background, of course. I am coming from a Buddhist heritage and background. And I live in a Buddhist country where predominantly 70% of the population is Buddhist. In fact, my father named my name Chandula and got this name from a Buddhist priest. I told you Chandula means uh, this surfacing the decision. Brothers and sisters, that God enabled me to make a decision 45 years ago as He revealed Himself to me coming from darkness into light. Understand who my living God. And ever since last 45 years, it has been a glorious journey, journey for me in walking with my living God. In this journey, I've gone through the valleys. I've crossed bridges. I've climbed, climbed mountains. I've faced many things. Thankfully, He is with me always. He has been with me. And He is with me. He will be with me. Brothers and sisters, as I told you, brothers and sisters, I have to tell some of these things repetitively because regularly, Many people are asking these questions for me. That's the reason. Because there are new people who are now joining to listen to this message. And for the benefit of them, I apologize to the rest of the people who have heard this over and over again. I have to repeat this. I'm not a full-time minister. I'm coming from a Buddhist background. My mother has been a strong Buddhist. And I have been with my mother traveling across to various Buddhist shrines and temples and kovils and everything, you name it. And I am thankful to God that God stretched out His hand across to me. Save me by His grace. Redeem me by His blood. And fill me with His Holy Spirit. And then seal me. And now he's leading me. Brothers and sisters, I'm a professional a commercial, retail and development bank with over 40 years of uh, expertise and experience. I'm a global expert on financial inclusion. I'm a social entrepreneur. I'm an impact investor. I'm globally engaged in a number of global institutions. I sit in a number of several international financial institution boards. Some of them I share. In this country, Sri Lanka also, I'm in a number of, several of financial institution boards and some of them I share. Some of them are leading, listed, licensed by the central bank, finance institutions and insurance company. My own organization which I founded Lanka Impact Investing Network, which is the first ever Impact Investing Network, now collaborate with a number of global partners. It has been a glorious privilege for me to pioneer and launch the TV reality show called Power Up, 
which became the number one business program in the country. I have traveled across the whole world several times in the last 45 years. Not to preach the gospel, but to deliver keynote speeches as an expert on the field of mind. I travel to all the best of the world locations several times on the invitation of some of the important and large organizations in the world. I am telling this not to pride myself but to make a difference that I am not a typical so-called pastor or a prophet or an apostle who is doing this for making money. I am not making any money out of this. I have sufficient by God's grace through my commercial and economic engagement. My economic engagement through professionally covers all of my economic requirements. So therefore I have no intention of making money out of this. No local or international organization financially or otherwise supports me for this. This is my calling. I use my professional earnings toward this work that God has assigned to me. And I'm not earning a single cent doing this. I'm not a paid or tight donation granted pastor or a prophet or apostle. I'm a servant of God. But I'm doing this as God has compelled it through the courage of my conviction. As I told you, brothers and sisters, to present the truth, you need to first stand for the truth. To stand for the truth, you need to live the truth, and the truth has to live in you. That's an awesome task. The most difficult thing that any servant of God would have. Enormous sacrifices you have to make. Many challenges, many difficult days, trials and tribulations you will have to face. Because it's not an easy journey. Proclaiming the truth, standing for the truth, living the truth, and the truth to live in you. That is what the Bible talks. Brothers and sisters, I am not part of the any Christian denominations, from a Catholic to Anglican, Methodist, Pentecostal, Evangelicals, or Brahmites, this or end time church movement or part of that, not belong to any one of those. They are very organized religions, not belong to anything that is connected to the living God. I am not, but I am connected to the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am part of the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the dynamic, true and undefiled church of the church or the called out ones, the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, we are thankful to God, we are presenting this to not to the, the Christian denominations and organizations. We are not trying to convert anybody to a religion. I am not doing that. I have no intention of Converting, I have not been converted. I can tell you, brothers and sisters, I am not a convert. I am gladly telling that. Coming from a Buddhist background, yet I am not a convert. But God has chosen me. That's the difference. Becoming a convert and God being choosing you and taking me back to his field, fall, is what? It means, not a convert. I have no intention of converting anybody to a religion. Buddhist to Christianity, Hindus to Christianity, or Islamist to Christianity, no. No intention of that. But simply stand before you presenting the truth. It is up to you if you are called of God, a chosen of God, to receive the truth and willing to stand and pay the price for it. I have done it. 
you i can tell you brothers and sisters whatever your background whatever your ethnicity whatever your religion if the truth is confronting you before you very much openly you have one so i simply accept or reject but if you accept it i can guarantee you that you would face enormous challenges and many sacrifices you will have to make like this tv evangelists and this so called super pastors and prophets presenting there is no glamour in this they are presenting this glamorous light hearted gospel which is not of christ that's what i'm going to share today one of the most important things brothers and sisters we have been sharing wonderful thing things connected to the kingdom of god directly relevant only to the bride of the lord jesus christ and the message that i'm bringing it's only meant for the bride of the lord jesus christ not to convert prepare them for the hour they are living to the true church of the lord jesus christ none is so brothers and sisters while they've been privileged for me to do this i'm thankful to my living god as i told you every morning i spend before him when i receive his divine anointing and unction because i always reminded me because what jesus told peter when he proclaimed that he is christ the son of the living god is it simon son of jona blessed are what is being blessed being revealed things by god is a blessing there is no greater blessing than that i can tell you if the father can showcase to you jesus said unto them it is not given but unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom these things are hidden from the wise and the prudent but revealed to the children brothers and sisters and that is why he said to peter simon son of jona blessed art thou why is blessed because the father begins to reveal things flesh and blood has not revealed but my father and then he said whatever you release on earth shall be released in heaven whatever god really reveal to you you need to release you need to showcase and whatever you release god will release from heaven but if he is not god relieve reveal it's not god coming from the heart and the presence and the mind of god whatever you say will not go beyond 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 the ceiling of your house or your cathedral or your temple or your mosque or your whatever place that's why we are presenting you the enormous truth for the hour that we are living in the time is clicking brothers and sisters as i told you many times what we have is this gregorian calendar which is originated originally by the romans focus on worshiping the sun god the solar the solar calendar and the pope gregory revised it and what we have is the pope gregory's calendar adopted by the world over all the countries some countries have a their own calendar based on luna with this that and other thing but yet at the end of the day all the activation across the whole world sometimes their religious activation takes place according to their own calendar but generally the life on planet earth goes on the gregorian calendar but god's calendar and god's timing is different there is one time piece that god has set upon the planet earth, that is the nation of israel the nation of israel is for the bride of the lord jesus christ to understand the timing that's god time piece god's clock set for the bride of the lord jesus christ to understand the exact 
the way that God making things. I had the privilege of visiting Israel in the year 2014 on a World Bank assignment. I spent significant time and traveling across Israel and understanding the agriculture, technology, everything. Apart from visiting the this um, Holy Land, the locations like Jerusalem, all these places. But brothers and sisters, today is 2022, almost after eight years of my visit. The East Trial has moved leaps and bounds in every frontier, economically, socially, technologically, militarily, and then as well as medically, all scientifically. The most advanced nation, most innovative nation, in Tel Aviv, you have the entire world's technology research centers. The Google, the Microsoft, eBay, all these software giants have their research centers in Tel Aviv. So brothers and sisters, I read a lot every day about the happenings in Israel. I can tell you, brothers and sisters, now, in 1948, they came and gathered as an independent nation, but they never had even one third of the land allocated to them. Today, they had more than two thirds or maybe four fifths of the land. The Arabs who are these Palest called Palestine, they are not Philistines, they are Palestines. They are Arabs, a mixture of Arabs. Because Ottoman time, the, all these Arabs came there. So the Palestines there is not Philistines. They are just uh, refret Arabs that have come from all over. And they are now restricted to a very basically a Gaza Strip and West Bank. Maybe one, one fifth of the land now. In 1967, they captured the, the whole city of Jerusalem. Earlier, they had only one-fourth of Jerusalem. But the entire city now under the Jewish control, there's a Jewish mayor of, for the city of Jerusalem. And under uh, Donald Trump, the president of the United States, moved the embassy to Jerusalem and Israel already made Jerusalem the as the eternal capital of the state of Israel. But within Jerusalem, there is one location still alien to them, controlled by Jordanian mullahs, the Temple Mount al Aqsa Mosque. Very soon, it will be in the hands of Israel. Moshe Dayan had the opportunity to take over. Moshe Dayan was general who led the Six-Day War in 1967, but he didn't do it. Well, that was not the time. That was not the time. That is why I say, brothers and sisters, this is the timepiece. Not the Gregorian calendar for the Bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why more and more, more knowledge of the things that are happening in the nation of Israel is absolutely right. I get updated every day, every morning I get updated. All the happenings in the state of Israel. And I'm thankful to God, the way the Lord is still. They still have not really found God, found the Lord. They know they are holding on to Torah, the Old Testament, but yet they have no redemption taken place. So brothers and sisters, it is absolutely vital and important for us to understand this timing, for us to know how the Lord is really wonderfully working in this moment in time for the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we have brought a number of series of studies connected to the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ 
engagement on the planet Earth. But today, my discussion is about joy and pleasure experienced by the Bride of the Lord Jesus Christ before the rapture. The joy and the pleasure the Bride of the Lord Jesus Christ will experience before the rapture. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this Bible, the Old Testament and New Testament, is one underlying theme that is the redemption plan of God. Nothing less, nothing more than that. Because when God created Adam, He created in the image and the likeness because this was in, inside Adam. But he lost it. And he had it to a certain extent. But totally lost it in the days of Noah during the floods, after the floods. Brothers and sisters, we are talking about the joy and pleasure the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ would experience on this planet earth before she be moved to the very realm of God's presence. As I told you this Bible, the word of God is only connected to the God's redemption plan. Nothing less, nothing more. But without understanding what God is telling them connected to the redemption, people are always looking at in a, their own terms, not from God's terms. We were all lost in Adam. We were all lost in Adam. 6,000 years ago. Because God told Adam, as having created him in the image and the likeness, he told him, be fruitful and multiply. Fruitful. That means Adam has to bring his own seed. Pure own seed. That's why woman was given, taken out from man. But you know, this was something which Adam lost it. And when Adam lost it, we were all lost in Adam for the living God. Not for a long, long period. With the time as far as God is concerned is even the planet Earth as well as the universe is counted on millions and billions. So we are talking about nearly 6,000 years of a short period of time. As far as that time is concerned, like a 60 seconds to the living God. In the comparison of billions and billions and billions of and eons of times. So brothers and sisters, God enable us to understand things which is connected to his redemption, redemption plan. When something lost, you need to find it. You need to gain it. You need to redeem it. Because very craftily, Lucifer, Satan, grabbed the title, the ownership of Adam and Eve and all of us that was inside Adam and Eve. And that is why, brothers and sisters, the redemption plan is brought into place and the entire the Bible, the Old Testament and New Testament is all about the redemption plan. That is what God began to showcase to children of Israel many times, but they failed to understand. When they were brought out of Egypt, 400 years of slavery, God called Moses to Mount Sinai to give the Torah the mind of God, the message of God, 
connected to God's redeeming. To make them a chosen generation, a holy nation, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. But they did not understand. Just I want to share a few thoughts on the time when God was trying to give the, the Torah to Moses. The behavior of the children of Israel who were slaves, who were worshipping and adoring various strange gods. No wonder they were trying to worship a calf, which is a symbol of prosperity in Egypt at that time. God of prosperity is something which people worship even today. Symbol may be a cow or a bull or a tiger or a lion or anybody. But people want to worship the symbol of prosperity because they are seeking after that material prosperity. Exodus chapter 20 verse 18 to 19 And all the people saw the thunderings, the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking when the people saw it they were removed and stood far off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us. We will hear. But let not God speak with us lest we die. See, brothers and sisters, thunderings, lightnings, and the trumpet. Thunderings, lightnings, and the trumpet, which is going to be relevant in the hour that we are going to live. As Jesus says, as a lightning coming out of the east unto the west, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. It's exclusively to the bride of the Lord Jesus. At the last trump, when the trumpet shall sound, dead in Christ shall rise first. We who are alive shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of night, having this mortal body become immortal. Brothers and sisters, when the children of Israel saw Moses going, and when he saw the mountain full of fire of God, the presence of God, thundering, lightning, trumpet. You know, brothers and sisters, God's presence is showcased like this, but God's presence is in His Word. God's presence in His Word. God and His Word is one, and His Spirit is one. God, the Spirit, and the word is one. And sometimes it is showcased as thunderings, lightnings and trumpet. In order to bring the, the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ to the point to understand the revelation that is needed to know, connected the truth and the plan and the design of God. That's exactly God was trying to showcase to Israel. But the Israel said, don't allow God to speak to us. You speak. It's like today. People do not want to hear God. They don't want to hear God. Because they know if God speaks to them, they will identify, He will identify what's wrong with them. What they have to do right. They don't want. They would rather hear a message from a pastor or a prophet or an apostle. Like the so-called people who are saying that. You know, brothers and sisters, ancient days, the kings wanted the prophet to tell them what, 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 what uh, peace to them. Neither Jeremiah, neither Isaiah, neither Micah, neither, none of those prophets did tell what the kings and the hierarchy won't listen. Nathan the prophet had the boldness go before King David and tell him, you are the man who committed murder and adultery. Yes. That's the kind of prophet that God's anointing is boldness. To stand before and tell the truth. 
you are not worried about whether you have 10000 or 50000 or 100000 or 1000 or 100 people you know brothers and sisters when jesus began to tell the truth all of those people came out to him for miracles for the bread for all the benefits one by one left one by one left in addition to 12 he had very about 70 closest associates and thousands followed him all the time wherever he go people followed him but when he told the truth unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood you have no life he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has everlasting life people began to leave all left including that 70 close associates and then jesus turned to his disciples and asked them would you also leave they said where can we go peter said where can we go you have the words of eternal life that's my brothers and sisters it's always a minority Narrow is the way few will go. Little folk. Little number. Not this hundred thousand, ten thousand millions. So brothers and sisters, it is so important today. Not many people are pleased to hear the truth message coming directly from God, revealed by Him. Because they have to change their ways. They have to run away from their wicked ways and the crooked ways. People only want material blessings and, and God is in the luggage. Whenever they want, open the luggage and take him out. But they drive their car. My petrol, my car, my way. That's what they say. You are in the luggage. Whenever I want, I take and get your assistance, thereafter I drive. That's what Easter has said to Moses. Don't let God speak to us. Yes. That's why many times the Bible says, today if you hear my voice, harm not your heart. So brothers and sisters, we are presenting you the truth. So the word of God is all, is about, all about God's redemption plan, been executed and showcased to the bride of the Lord of Jesus Christ. I also want to tell you something. All what is written here will be showcased, will be implemented, will be done here on this planter. Nothing that is here will not be done when we are gone out to be with him. Everything that is given here needs to be done and happen here on the planter. That is why it is given. What is not written, there is something which is directly from God's mind to us, which will come to the bride. Because the Bible says here, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, but as it is written, I hath not seen, no ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love. Brothers and sisters, the things that God has prepared cannot be conceived by human imagination, human wisdom. Verse 10, but God has revealed them to us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searches deep things, oh, so all things, yea, the deep things of God, deep things. The Spirit of God searches the deep things of God, revealed to us. So brothers and sisters, black letters in white book of this, Useless unless the Spirit of God coming and unraveling everything. 
originally as i told you brothers and sisters when god called moses to mount sinai gave him the torah tables of stones were created by him it's a made by him not man made and what he wrote bible says he wrote with his own finger of course god does not have hands and fingers is directly from god and he wrote on both sides of the tables of stones so that there is no way anybody could add or subtract it but second time when god called moses he told him bring two tables of stone from below earth man made tables of stone and then he told moses to write while he is dictating so it is moses who wrote what god showed to him he didn't told he didn't write a lie he wrote the truth but the hebrew language hebrew language is very different to other languages totally different to other language it's a language given by god to god chosen so therefore to understand that you need the spirit of god the spirit without the spirit of god you cannot understand that is why as long as moses was there he was able to explain things to the children of israel because he said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of god as long as moses was there he was able to explain everything what was written there but after his death these people began to interpret the way they want based on their material requirement and the worldly journey and every time they did god send a prophet he raised prophet and said no this is not the way that you are doing this is the way thus say the law come back to the original come back to this prophet after prophet prophet after prophet god said and god said hard not your heart you stick the people today if you hear his voice but they kill the prophets they never listen to them and that's why jesus also gave many parables about the servants killing the 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 owner's son so brothers and sisters what the eye hath not seen the ear hath not heard no hath got into the heart of man it only comes by the revelation and the revelation comes by the spirit of god i say but god has revealed the flesh and blood cannot reveal these things you can go to 10000 bible schools and theological schools i can tell you you can study every word of the bible every chapter of the bible every verse of the bible but yet absolutely ignorant of the mind of god of the design of god of the plan of god because you have nothing to do with the spirit of god that would lead you and guide you and fill you and seal you without that because bible says jesus said the word that i speak they are spirit they are life god in his word god is a spirit god in his word god in his word so brothers and sisters that is why paul says first corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 and 12 For what things know the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God know no man but the spirit of God. Man will only know what he knows about related to his body, soul, and the spirit uh, in his own materially, in his three-dimensional world. But the things of God, man doesn't know. Only the spirit of God can reveal it. Verse twelve. Now we have received the, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. To whom? To the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are certain things that are given for us to know. That's what Jesus says: You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. 
is given to us freely. So that we understand God's redemption plan properly. And when we understand God's redemption plan properly, brothers and sisters, we will not be playing games connected to the religions. We will not be playing games connected to the traditions and rituals and the drama connected to these Christian denominational systems. We will be facing the truth. We will be understanding the truth. Then we will be living the truth and allowing the truth to live in us. That's why, brothers and sisters, we will not receive the spirit of this world, but the spirit of God. So that we may understand everything. It's all connected to your redemption plan, my redemption plan. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. We think also, we speak not in the words of man's wisdom, but teacheth, but the Holy Ghost teacheth comparing the spiritual things with spiritual things. You can't compare God's things with the natural things. I heard a recently a well-known personality with regard to one of the denominational pastors, the denominational institution, trying to explain the Trinity. You know what the example he got? What? The Son. He said, that's the Trinity. The, the sunlight is the is God. Sun ray is the, the sun. Sun warmth is the Holy Spirit. That's the explanation. Even that explanation is a failure. How can sun, sun is only one sun. There is no trinity in the sun. Sun ray is not a part of separate it's a part of it's the sun's own thing so you cannot compare things natural things to compare things are spiritual that's why brothers and sisters our god cannot be seen through an image god is not part as i told you many times god is not part of the universe God is not part of the universe. So therefore you cannot see God through sun, moon and the stars. However great they are. Mountains, now Japanese worship mountain, Mount Fuji. There are shrines there in the Mount Fuji. I have been there to the base. Uh, there are shrines there. Mount Fuji is treated as a god. Mountains, the rivers, rivers also, you know, in India, Ganges. River Ganges is uh, treated as a holy river. Mountains, rivers and the trees and the rocks. Human beings, the animals, the four-footed, two-footed and birds. But our God cannot be visualized through that. Even the picture of the Lord Jesus Christ is not connected to the living God. No way. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior, our Redeemer. Now, different artists will have different kinds of pictures of the Lord Jesus Christ, long hair, the eyes and all kinds of But Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but the Christ liveth in me. The life now I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of the Living God. Then he says, I no longer know him in the flesh. No longer know him in the flesh. It's a material. What we are trying to see, I mean, I have seen uh, some people are giving various um, visions, say, Jesus came with long hair, beautiful shining light, eyes, this, that, and all nonsense. Pure nonsense. I can tell you, there cannot be things like that. The Bible depicts certain things about the, 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 the 
feet and uh, hands and all these things. But you know, these are symbolical things, which has more greater meaning than just an image. That is the reason, brothers and sisters. Jesus said, I am with you now, Emmanuel, but I shall be in you. I shall be in you. So, brothers and sisters, it is so important for us to understand that you cannot compare things of God to the natural world. Nothing in, in the planet, uh, universe can be compared to an uh, image of God. But religious system want always an image. Always. When Nimrod started the religion, the sun and moon worship, people for a moment looking at sun, you know, get blinded. But then he wanted the image to represent the sun. And that's why he became the sun god. And thereafter, how the sun god, the sun, sun god, son, sun god, daughter, sun god, all kinds of things. So that's why all the religions in this world erupted through Nimrod, followed by Assyrians, and then the first global empire, Babylon Empire, adopted it, prospered it, Medo Persians bring it to a greater extent of development of that religion, and the Grecians took it to a different level altogether bringing the images, the statues and the various things and doctrines. And the Romans created a greater religion, the sun and the moon worship. And the Romans left Holy Roman Empire, which is now headed by Papa, the Vicarious Philidi, absolutely connected to the sun worship and moon worship. And the, all the denominations that are daughters of the Mother Harlot, also connected to the worship of the sun and the moon worship. Even these Brenamites having the pictures of uh, Hoffman's design of the Lord Jesus Christ, Brenham's, uh, Brother Brenham's picture, every image not connected to God. Even if it is Brother Brenham or the picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must worship the Father in spirit and truth, the Bible says. You, Brenamites, I am telling you, you have a picture of uh, Jesus of Hoffman. And Brother Brenham on the, with the halo on his head, essentially, you are sun worshippers. Bible says, no picture, no image. Why do you need to have an image? If God is not an image, God is a spirit. Must worship the Father in spirit and through the Bible says. So brothers and sisters, do not bring natural thing into the spiritual dimension because we are going to understand the spiritual dimension in much greater way today. Because it says, verse 14, verse 20, chapter 2, verse 1, the natural man receiver not the things of the Spirit of God, they That's why they want to have a natural image. That's why so many statues are there in the, the religious system, the Catholic. In the true Buddhism, since I'm coming back, coming from Buddhist background, there is no connection to worship of trees and statues. Dr. Narada Thera, in his true Buddhism book, Wonderfully has written that there is nothing to do with worship of statues, even if it's a statue of Buddha. Underlying theme of Buddhism is getting rid of desire to get rid of the pain. Nothing to do with this any such worship. So is you find the Catholic Church. So many statues, even statue of Jesus Christ on the cross. Halo on his head. Halo means what? The sun. Behind every statue head is sun. That's how the sun is worshipped. 
Islam is moon worship. Allah is moon god. Hinduism all connected to the sun and moon worship. That's why brothers and sisters, even the Pentecostals, Evangelicals and Charismatics, essentially sun worship, not only Brahmins. Because they are identified with the Nimrods, diabolical trinity, which is not of God, not in the word of God. Bible, Bible categorically tells, Behold the Lord God of Israel, one God, there is no gods beside me. You go and tell any Israelites or Jew about that, they will chase you out. One father and one mediate, one redeemer. And once the redemption is over, he hand over that rest, all the power that is given to him back. That's what the Bible says, my Bible. You know what your Bible says. My Bible says very clearly. So, brothers and sisters, we are going to understand the natural man will not discern the things connected to the Spirit of God. They are foolishness sometimes. Neither can you know because they are spiritually discerned. Now, we are going to understand some things which are spiritually discerned, which is now even scientifically recognized and acknowledged because it's God's creation. It's the truth. It's not a lie. It is the living God. God lives. Nobody has created this God. People ask me, who created God? God has not been created. He is self-existing. If you have a God as a your own father, then you have to have a grandfather, great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather. No. God has no beginning, no ending. No grandfathers, grandmothers, grand you know, all kinds of things like that. He's I am. I am. Everlasting. Everlasting, the living God, the omnipotent, omnipresence. So today we are going to understand something very, very important, brothers and sisters. The bride of the Lord Jesus Christ experiencing joy and pleasure on the planet. Now we are talking about various joy. Naturally, we experience various pleasure. Naturally, we experience in this planter. I will come to that in a little later. When it comes to joy and pleasure, we always um, relate what we gain through naturally in a materialistic world. Uh, sometimes we are talking about a joy and a pleasure which lasts for a moment and thereafter it is gone. Because brothers and sisters, in this planet Earth, the life is so much of um, ups and downs, joy and sorrow, all kinds of uh, trauma, trauma and tribulations. So in the midst of all that, what would be the joy and the pleasure the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ would experience before she being taken out in the rapture. And that we are going to discuss today. What kind of joy is that? It is the same joy as um, we experience, you know, uh, when you really go to this charismatic uh, or Pentecostal service. Very sensationalized. Oh, this evangelistic meeting, jumping up, uh, singing all kinds of music. I'm, I love music. I listen to many musics. I, I'm, I'm listening to many wonderful music. I love it. I enjoy listening to many instruments. 
brothers and sisters but you know they created that two hours or three hours they are at that place or one hour highly charged and sensationalized drumming guitars uh, organs every pianos everything and there is significant amounts of joy why is there but when you leave that it's not there it just leaves you i have experienced that i'm involved in this denomination system some time ago you say hallelujah praise the lord you hosanna you dance you speak in tongues and then in a moment it's gone we are not talking about that kind of temporary joy we are also not talking about a temporary pleasure so we need to understand the kind of joy and the pleasure the bride of the lord jesus christ would experience not going there that's a different thing the bible say i had not seen ye had not heard the experience that you would have in the awesome presence of god it's a different it's a different experience brothers and sisters nobody can write it here properly even paul said i can't write it having experience a glimpse of it i cannot so brothers and sisters we need to understand the kind of joy and the pleasure the bride of the lord jesus christ would experience right now here not going out they are going after in the rapture thereafter no there is something that you will experience that's the totally glorious moment cannot be compared to anything but there is a joy that is significantly available as a glorious privilege of the bride of the lord jesus christ here and now and we'll understand that psalm 16 in the psalm 16 was um verse 11 psalm 16 verse 11 psalm 16 verse 11 thou will show me the path of life is connected to the path of life in thy presence is the fullness of joy at thy right hand the pleasures forever more in thy presence is the fullness of joy at thy right hand the pleasure forever more brothers and sisters we are talking about a fullness of joy a pleasures forever more and it talks about in thy presence is the fullness of joy at thy right hand the pleasure of heaven so you mean to say that we need to experience this here and now of course in his glorious presence in his dimensions are different this because brothers and sisters we are still as i told you in the process of completing the redemption only one group of peoples have been redeemed now so far and that is the old testament saints totally completely redeemed that is why jesus christ on the cross he said it finished went to the bottom went to the bottom the shield 
there. By the efficacy of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name, release them. Came out of the graves and walked into the very dimension of God. They are now there. They are in the dimension of God. Experiencing a glorious, glorious presence of God. Like the opportunity Lucifer had in the garden of God, in the holy mountain of God. The glorious opportunity to explore the things connected to God has prepared. With the Bible says, the eye hath not seen, the ear hath not heard what God has prepared for them. He has prepared. So, brothers and sisters, we are talking about the fullness, not partial joy. And the joy is not a temporary joy. It is a joy that is there continuously. Continuously. Now today we feel sorry, we feel sad, we feel lost, we feel gain. Not that kind of thing. Not that kind. This is a different kind of joy. You know, brothers and sisters, Paul and Silas were in deep dungeon. Their hands were tied, the legs were tied. In the deep dungeons of scorpions and all kinds of uh, rats and and they sang praises to God. Why? In His presence, fullness of joy. That's a different joy. Not this temporary joy when you eat a very nice dinner. Delicate joy of eating ice cream or whatever delicacies. You have it and it's gone thereafter. So, at thy right hand is the pleasures of heaven. You know, God doesn't have, doesn't have hands and legs. God is a spirit. But God is talking about a right hand. And we need to understand what that is. Brothers and sisters, as I told you, many don't understand this. Because, in the, in the Bible, it's so important for us to understand these truths because when God gave uh, Ten Commandments, and those Ten Commandments are connected to very important things. The first five is connected to God. I am the Lord thy God which brought you out of the land of Egypt. First, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Third, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Fourth, remember the Sabbath day. The fifth, thou shalt honor thy father and mother. And it is also connected because they are connected to God's heritage. Rest are connected to our social life. All connected to the three dimensional world, the five. Rest are connected to God. There are ten dimensions in the realm of God. Three are here, three we live in a three dimension. Fourth is in the center. Fifth is the, the spirit dimension where the diabolical demonic spirit operate under the authority and the power of the, the angelic 
beings who are the ministers of God. The rest are God's dimension. I'll come to that a little later. But brothers and sisters, when it comes to the right hand of God, what does it mean? Let's understand few scriptures. Psalms 31, 131, verse 10. Even there thy hand leads me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Thy right hand shall hold me. Psalm 63, verse 8. My soul followeth heart after thee. Thy right hand hold me, upholdeth me. Psalms 20 verse 6 I know that the Lord saveth his anointed he will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand Psalms 89 Thou hast a mighty arm and as strong is thy hand high is thy right hand Justice and judgment, habitation of thy throne, of thy throne, mercy and truth shall go before thee. Blessed are the people that know the joyful sound. Joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. This is the revelation. Blessed are the people that know the joyful sound. So joy comes the sound. It's music. What music is? In the language of God. In the message of God. The joyful sound and they shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Walking in the light of his countenance, hearing his voice, understanding his, is showcase as a glorious joy here. And in thy name shall they rejoice all, thy, all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. Verse 17. Thou art the glory of their strength. In thy favor our horn shall be exalted. The Lord our defense and the Holy One of Israel our King. So let's understand brothers and sisters a little bit more about the right hand. Isaiah 61 verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in my Lord. Rejoice in the Lord my soul. Shall be joyful in my God. He had clothed me with a garments of salvation and covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decked himself the ornament as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Talks about the joy of the bride and the bridegroom With regard to understanding in experiencing and glorious, wonderful presence of the living God. Now, again to understand what this right hand of God is, let's understand a little bit more. Because, brothers and sisters, as I told you, when you are presenting the truth, it has to have a beginning to the end. It has to dovetail. From Genesis to Revelation. It has to be line upon line, precept upon precept. It has to be bring forth the, the shadows and the types. And then it has to confirm the, the new to the weak, old and old to the new. Old Testament, Old Covenant, New Covenant. Hebrew chapter 10. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, 
this man. After he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Sat down. We were talking about the right in his presence in the fullness of it. his right hand, the pleasures of evermore. Sat down at the right hand of God. After he offered that. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies made his footstool, verse 14, Hebrew 10 verse 14, who by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Perfected a group of people which are separated to God. Sanctified means separated for God's ownership. God's ownership. Sanctified means separated exclusively for God's ownership and use. Sanctified. Perfected them. Verse 15. Whereof the Holy Ghost is a witness to us after that he had said this before. This is the covenant I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law into their hearts and in their mind I will write. Put the law into their hearts and in their mind I write. This, this wonderful thing. And their sins and iniquities I will rem remember no more. Now where the remission of these is no more offering of sin. You know, brothers and sisters, as I told you, the underlying theme from beginning to the end, back and forth, up and down, every word, every line is all connected to God's redemption plan. That's why Jesus told the Israelites, the Jewish leaders, the high priest, the Pharisees and Sadducees. You are accusing me with various accusations, saying I am a devil, I am this and I am that. I am telling you now, read the scriptures referring to the Torah, the first five books, the prophets and the Psalms. It is written of me. It is written of me. And he said, I came to fulfill every comma, every dot of it. He said that. Because brothers and sisters, from Genesis to Revelation, it is connected to redemption plan. God executing God's redemption plan to take us back to him. Take us away from the ownership of uh, slave master into God's heritage, God's ownership. That's what it is. That's what it is, nothing less than that. Our redemption plan, our redemption is being kind of, you know, affected by this. So brothers and sisters, he said, Hebrew chapter 10 verse 12 says, This man referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I must tell you brothers and sisters, when Jesus was born, he was not God born. Never. He was 100% human being. But sin sinless. That's what the virgin birth means. Sinless in the womb of Mary, but 100% human being. That is why he lived like a human being. On the river Jordan, when he went to baptism, by John the Baptist, the Holy Spirit descended him, incarnated in him. And God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. 
the living God in him. You know, God never emptied himself. God never emptied himself and came abided in the Lord Jesus Christ. No. If he did not, he, he wouldn't have prayed to the Father. Father, he continued to spend time with him, prayed to him, cried unto him. When he was asking Lazarus to rise, he cried unto God, hear me. And finally on the, on the cross, he cried unto the Father, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So God cannot forsake another God. And then finally he said, Into thy hands I commit my spirit. You know, brothers and sisters, he was 100% man. He died as a man. God cannot die as a man. God cannot be beaten. God cannot be ridiculed. In the ancient time, the Israelites, you mess around with that, you know, you are finished. Therefore, our God is a living, holy God. God is a consuming fire, the Bible says. Many people try to kind of, you know, adopt themselves to be like deities and God and they are gone. So, so you know, you cannot ridicule or uh, slept upon the God. But Jesus, he faced all those things. He faced ridicule. He faced humiliation. He faced the weeping by that Roman whip. All that, as a human being, he went through. Not as God. That's what he says. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice himself, for the sin forever. Sat down at the right hand of God. So therefore what is this right hand? Right hand always talks about the power. Sometimes left hand people are also there. But right hand. Sat down at the right hand of God. For what? For one offering. He has perfected them that are sanctified. So brothers and sisters, this Hebrew chapter 10 verse 12 to 18, it comes and says here verse uh, 15, for, uh, verse 15 says, Wherefore of the Holy Ghost also witness to us that we had said before. What is the purpose of him being right hand? What is the purpose? He said, by one sacrifice, he has separated them, sanctified them, taken them to the ownership. Redeem is that. That is why I say, brothers and sisters, don't mess around with your redemption. Like these denominational people. Don't mess around. You just don't, you don't Join redemption. You don't purchase redemption. It has been purchased for you. You have been chosen by God. You don't take membership for redemption. No. Them that are separated, sanctified, are being perfected. How it has been done? He said, this is the covenant I will make after those days. I will, I will put my law into their heart. You know, this heart is very important. Heart responsible for blood circulation, the whole body. I will put my law into their heart. Life of the flesh is in the blood. And the life of the blood is in the word. Life of the word is in the spirit. I will put my law into their heart and in their minds I will write divine consciousness. Their mind. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. No other mind. And their sins and iniquities I will no more remember no more. 
iniquity. No more. Now where the remission is there of this is, there is no more offering of sin. Once and done. So brothers and sisters, as I told you, don't mess around with your redemption. There is only one way to be redeemed. By the efficacy of the blood of Jesus Christ. That is why Bible says, without shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sins. If the Old Testament saints were redeemed from their bondage, from their slave, from their prison, by the efficacy of the blood, where was the efficacy of the blood? In the name. The name of the Lord. Jesus never carried blood in bottles to the sewer. Carried this name. And the Bible very clearly says one after one, not only one scripture, ten scriptures, more than that. There is no other name given under heaven for man's salvation. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you do in deed and word, do it all in Jesus' name. But I'm not saying Bible says. Therefore, when Jesus said, All power, all power, all power in heaven and earth is given to whom? Given, huh? not taken. Father has given to him. When he rose from the dead, Father gave it to him. It's given to him. He said. Go therefore baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. One singular name for all three. What is the name of the Father? Jesus said, I have come in my Father's name. Yes. It's a name given by God. Yeshua. God. The Savior and Redeemer. The name of the Son. No. And Jesus said, I will send the Holy Spirit in my name. Therefore, brothers and sisters, all these people who are in denomination system are baptizing themselves in titles. Ownership is not transferred. Satan holds them still in their hands, in his hands. They are not sanctified. When you are not sanctified, for the sanctification, you need to have the redemption. That is why Jesus is in the right hand of God. That is the position of redemption. That is the position of redemption. When you are redeemed, you are separated, owned by God. When you are owned by God, the covenant is that He writes His law. He put His law into my heart and write. So the heart and mind, my body, soul and the spirit is one with Him. I am in Him, He is in me. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. Unless you eat my flesh, drink my blood, you have no life. The word. So the sanctified people are the people who are redeemed. And the redemption, for that redemption only, the Lord is in the right hand. And the Old Testament the Psalms and various things write about the right hand looking to the future. Your right hand upholdeth me. Your right hand of power. Right hand of strength of my salvation. The Old Testament was looking forward for that. When Jesus ascended, we will understand that. The right hand. It's a redemptive power that Jesus holds. To take the ownership back to the Father. Once the ownership is back to the Father through the redemption, by the efficacy of the blood of Jesus Christ, efficacy of the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are owned totally and completely by God. And then the covenant is, He put His law into my heart, and in my mind, therefore my body, soul and the spirit, my mind, heart and the soul, all in oneness. And that is why even in the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 16 verse 19, Mark writes, So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, the disciples, 
he was received into the heavens and sat on the right hand of god as i told you these are visualizations uh, connected to not natural things of god cannot be compared with natural things please don't do that don't imagine a natural throne and then you know like you know catholic say you have the old man like a father you have jesus like the son younger person and the dove like a holy spirit triangle don't imagine the things of god like that there are when the heavens bible talks about the throne the god is a holy spirit he fills the whole universe and the dimensions of god are different to because the dimensions of god all connected to the planet earth to the universe and beyond it's not restricted to the universe Universe is such an awesome, huge, wonderful place, but it's not connected to those damn universe only. Beyond, because God is above the universe, above the universe, it's not part of the universe. He fills the universe, but He's above. So, brothers and sisters, right hand of God is connected to God's redemption plan, being executed. none other than the lord jesus christ by the efficacy of the blood of jesus christ which is now in the efficacy of his mighty name that is why he said to ask anything in my name father to understand the power there is no other name given under heaven in the right hand the authority that's what he said all power in heaven and earth is given unto me that's why brothers and sisters we need to understand this because uh, it's so important that when we understand this we will see some of the important things which we need to know ex chapter 7 verse 55 and 56 the experience of stephen remember stephen was stoned to death while the stones are coming from thousands of people look what he says stephen being he being full of the holy ghost full full of the holy ghost looking up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of god and jesus standing at the right hand of god jesus standing at the right hand of god and said behold i see heavens heavens plural not singular heavens open and the son of man standing at the right hand of god son of man standing at the right hand of god the heavens referring to the God's dimensions. Now Stephen was still here on planet Earth. The stones are coming upon him. He said, "He's been hit from all over. His body is all over his body. The stones are getting struck. Imagine, brothers, and you are in the center, and thousands of stones are coming out to your physical body." the kind of agony and the pain physically he would have felt but yet he was full of the holy ghost and the dimensions are open to him then he see the son of man at the right hand of god so brothers and sisters what is this right hand the right hand is connected to god's redemption plan when you are redeemed when you are redeemed that is the beginning that you and i are going to experience experience the pleasure of god but sami says in thy presence is the fullness of joy 
at thy right hand the place of your womb. And that pleasure that can come to us only through being redeemed. And the redemption is not this light gospel that is Pentecostals, Evangelicals are, are presenting. It is not a healing and uh, uh, kind of miraculous things gospel. No. The redemption is totally different. For the redemption efficacy of the blood is absolutely essential. And the efficacy of the blood is in the efficacy of the name. And then you are taken to the ownership of God. Once you are taken to the ownership of God, that is why Jesus said, All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Tarry till you receive. And they tarry. He said, I am with you now, but I shall be in you. I am with you. I shall be in you. And in the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended. Not one third of God, the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of Christ. And Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Christ liveth in me. The life now I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It's a living experience. So, brothers and sisters, Paul having said that, right hand of God is all connected to the power that is vested in the Lord Jesus Christ for my redemption and your redemption to take us back to the ownership of God. Redemption is that. We are no longer owned by our slave master Satan. No longer owned by ourselves. We are property of God. I also don't own myself. Remember that brothers and sisters. We are the redeemed. Redemption. Means God takes the ownership. And once God takes the ownership. He fills us with his spirit. Once he is filling as his spirit, he sealed it so that we are full, like Stephen here. Full of the Holy Spirit. The stones are coming on him. The heavens or the dimensions of God are open. And he sees that his redemption is being completed. Absolutely. His redemption is completed. He has been redeemed. No, brothers and sisters, just before a moment he was writing, reading, communicating the word of God. Line upon line, precept upon precept. The Jews got angry, began to stone him. And that is why the redeemed of the Lord, them that are sanctified to the ownership of God, he said, I will put my law into their heart and in their mind. So it comes to the body, soul and the spirit. Heart, mind and the body totally, totally and completely captured, owned. The people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, sealed by the Holy Spirit. And then they are led by the, the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. For that, you need the covenant of God, the word of God in you. Brothers and sisters, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul is writing. It is not expedient for me to doubtlessly glory. I will come to the visions and the revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. And the such one caught up to the third heaven. Where is that? Third heaven. Brothers and sisters, I said, as I told you, there are ten dimensions. 
these are showcase in the types and shadows in the temple. The Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant. What is inside the Ark of the Covenant? Ten Commandments, the manna, and the Aaron's rod that budded. So, brothers and sisters, third heaven in the dimensions of God, he was taken to that who experienced this, Paul himself, but he doesn't tell. He doesn't want to glory that. Caught up to third heaven in the body, or otherwise he doesn't know. And as I knew the man, whether in body or out of the body, I cannot tell God no one. How that he was caught up into paradise. Dimensions. Heard the unspeakable words which is not lawful for man to utter. It's not written by Paul anyway. Paul has written so many epistles, but what he saw there is not written. They're unspeakable. Can't write it. I can't write them. It's not written here. So many epistles Paul has written, but nothing of that. But he only tells that. That's where, brothers and sisters, God's dimensions are. And Jesus himself said, John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3, In my father's house many mansions. If it not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place where I will come again and receive yourself, you unto myself, that where I am, there you also be. So brothers and sisters, how this whole thing connecting beautifully. In my father's house, many mansions. You know, God does not have physical uh, tabernacle or house. The Bible says, the universe, the whole heavens, the whole heavens is his throne. He's above that as well. He fills. The earth is his footstool. But you know, brothers and sisters, when Jesus said, in my father's house, in my father's realm, the living God that Jesus presented is not a deity. He said, you must worship God in spirit and in truth. He's told Samantha and woman, God is a spirit. You must worship the Father in spirit and truth. So he doesn't change. He doesn't change at that articulation. Definitely not. God is a spirit. On the cross, once everything is over, it is finished. He said, into your, into your spirit, into your hands I commit my spirit. So, brothers and sisters, when Paul is taken up and experience the dimension finally on that, that's what we are talking about. And when Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many edges. The realm of God. That is why, brothers and sisters, even Jesus was able to tell that thief on the cross tonight, you shall be with me in paradise in the dimension of God. The dead in Christ, their bodies are buried. Their bodies are buried. Decomposed to the earth. But their spirit are in a dimension. Among the five dimensions there. There are no purgatories. Like Catholic believe that you can, you know, ship them from one one thing to other. No. Dead in Christ, their spirit, their soul are in dimension of God. They are not in the shoal. All the people that were there in the shoal were released and redeemed. And they are in dimension of God. So, brothers and sisters. And when Jesus said, if it not so, I would have told you. 
in my father's realm, there are many dimensions, many mansions. That's what he said, in my father's house there are many mansions. I would have told you if not. I go to prepare a place for you. Now Jesus told this before the crucifixion. He said that before the crucifixion. So what he did was, he went to the cross to prepare the place for me. Prepare me for the place. Prepare me for the place. And that is why he is there now at the right hand of God. Which have the full authority of redemption. By the efficacy and then giving back to God the full ownership of me. When you are owned by God. Brothers and sisters. And that is why it says. Hebrew chapter 10 verse 19 to 21 having therefore the boldness to enter into the holiest by the the blood of Jesus the boldness by the blood of Jesus there is no other way the efficacy of the blood efficacy of the blood because blood was contaminated and polluted in the 6000 years ago when the serpent seed entered into us our DNA was changed a DNA was changed. So the holiest, boldness into he, enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Where is the blood now? In the efficacy of his name. By a new and a living way. A new and a living way. That's why he says, Behold, I'm a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Which has consecrated us through the veil that he say his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God. Brothers and sisters, God's right hand is God's redemption plan. And the redemption plan is executed by the Lord Jesus Christ. He had died on the cross, shed the blood. Now, as a result of that, we have forgiveness of sins by virtue of our repentance and our sins are remitted by the efficacy of the blood and then we are filled with the very spirit of God very spirit of the living God the spirit of Christ that lives and when it is the spirit of Christ that lives we are sealed so that nobody else can put anything else more Satan cannot have anything to do with us thereafter. That's why we are being sealed. Sealing is for that. Once the seal is done, nothing, no anammanan can come in. That's what I am telling you brothers and sisters. You who are the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ cannot mess around with other things now. You can't eat the tables from the table of God and from tables of sin. That's what I'm saying. This is a, our God is a consuming fire. It's a dangerous thing to fall into the hand of the living God. You cannot tell the truth in the morning, tell lies in the afternoon. You cannot drink from the word of God and uh, eat it and take, go to the bar and drink uh, kasipu and beer and uh, alcohol and whiskey and all these things. No way. There are no intervals to the children of God. I remember when I was in the Pentecostal denomination, early stage in 1976. In 1975, I came to know the Lord. 1976, we used to have this all-night uh, prayer meetings and things like that. There was a man who was a drunkard who came to know the Lord. And then uh, all night we were praying and speaking in tongues, saying all kinds of way, so much of power was there. And this man was joyful. And two days later, we met him, he had gone back to drinking. So then we were called him and asked him what happened. You know, I was very joyful that day. 
for the joy, I went to the bar and put two dots. And he went back. Joy ye kete dekha daagatta. He was telling. Joy ye kete an gila bar ekla dekha daagatta. He was overjoyed with that charismatic moments. Overjoyed and went to the bar and put two shots. There is no way, brothers and sisters, the bride, the Lord Jesus Christ, do that. The Bible says very clearly: Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not burn? Yes. Or can you walk on hot coals and your feet not burn? It's very, very specific. That's why there is no intervals for the obedience. You obey and you move to the next. You obey, you move to the next. Because we are going from glory to glory. There is no interval for the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why it is called fullness of joy, pleasures of hell no. Because His law is put into my heart. His word is written in my mind. Divine consciousness. Divine consciousness. We are not thinking about God. We are thinking with God because we are not reading the word; we are eating the word. Divine consciousness. When the law in my heart, written in my mind, divine consciousness. When your divine consciousness is the uh, twenty-four by seven, every second, every minute, every hour, every moment, there is no interval. So, brothers and sisters. It says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and a living way, living way, not a dead way, continuous living way, consecrated or committed, owned by God. That's the idea, and that's why, brothers and sisters. In the book of Revelation, twenty-one, twenty-two, and twenty-one to twenty-three. Again, confirmation of all this. And I saw that so no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Verse twenty-three, Revelation twenty-one, twenty-three. And the city had no need of a sun, neither moon, to shine it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb was the light thereof. Now these are all symbolical things. We need to understand this well. So we are continuation. This continuation is still there. I saw no temple therein, not a physical. Temple, he says, the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. When you refer to the Lamb, it's referred to the redemption. John saw Jesus. Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. The Bible says, the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. God knew that we would be lost. And that is why God gave Abel the revelation. Instead of bananas and pineapples and leeks and garlics and all kinds of uh, other vegetables and fruits, bring the lamb. Bring the lamb and offer the sacrifice. And Jesus was that lamb. And wherever the Bible is talked about the lamb. From Genesis to Revelation, from Genesis to Revelation, it talks about the Lamb, the Lamb of God. He was not only a good shepherd; he was the Lamb of God. When Bible talks about the Lamb, it is talk about your redemption and my redemption. We are the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. 
So brothers and sisters, the right hand of God is connected to your redemption and my redemption and that price is paid by the efficacy of the blood of the Lamb of God which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why brothers and sisters, once you are entered into that, there is no physical temple. One, there are no three people mentioned here. Because the role of the Lamb is only till the redemption is over. Yes, the role of the Lamb or the Redeemer is only the redemption is over. And that is why the Lord Jesus will come back as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, not as the Redeemer. By that time he has redeemed us and finished. He said finished. And then he starts to restore everything back to the original status of the planet Earth when God handed it to Adam at that time. He has to restore that. That's why a thousand years is needed. Restore this planet Earth, this corrupted, this polluted planet Earth back to the original status when God gave in trusting to Adam. So brothers and sisters, the Lamb, whenever the Bible talks about the Lamb, it connected to your redemption and my redemption. It is connected to the efficacy of the blood of Jesus. Without shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sins. And the efficacy of the blood of the Lamb is now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore, brothers and sisters, when he talks about Revelation chapter 21 verse 23, and the city had no need of a sun. Oh, we need a sun. Need a moon. Shining. But the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light of their own. Your redemption and my redemption need to be experienced every second. That's what. Fullness of joy. Your redemption and my redemption is not a part time thing. It is not a restricted to a particular time, particular location. Yes, of course, redemption is not location by bound or time bound. Redemption is a continuous thing. It is what the Lord is doing in, in us. So, the glory of God and the Lamb lights. Brothers and sisters, when the Lamb light thereof means our redemption brings for us to be owned by God, then sanctified for His and for Him alone, and then His word is put into my heart. Word is written in my mind. Divine consciousness is given. Human consciousness is taken away. That's why Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Nevertheless, I live. Christ liberty. in me. The life now I live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son. Same identical faith. You know, brothers and sisters, everlasting joy. Fullness of joy. Pleasure of him. Stephen had that though he was being stoned. Paul faced persecution, shipwrecked, imprisonment, finally axing his head. All the apostles faced tribulation, trials. Joyfully, with pleasure in their heart. What? Because the Lamb was lightning. The Lamb was the lightning because it's the redemption. That's why, brothers and sisters, this temporary 
temporary joy is something that the human beings are always looking for. Temporary pleasure. Uh, for some reason, all the religions also geared to offer man a temporary pleasure. Temporary excitement, sensationalizing, dramatizing. <coughs> Temporary pleasure and dramatizing things and creating some sort of a temporary sensationalizing and pleasure which is um, part of the worldly affairs but also religions are now doing that. Now this has been done by charismatics, Pentecostal, evangelical and dramatics to create that sensationalization, bring in the flesh part of it. That is why if you turn to John chapter 4, the, the Jesus' dialogue with the woman of Samaria. Let's read a few scriptures. John chapter 4 verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knew the gift of God, the gift of God, if thou knew the gift of God, and who it is, said unto thee, Give me to drink, Thou would have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. Living water. And then she said, you know, dialogue goes, you know, you deep, well is deep, and you don't have a bucket, how can you give this water? And Jesus said, John chapter 4, verse 13 to 15. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whoso drinketh of this water, shall thirst again. But whoso drinketh the water that I shall give, shall never thirst, but water that I shall give him, in him a well of water springing into everlasting life. Woman said unto me, uh, him, Sir, give me this water that, uh, that I thirst not, neither come hither. You know, brothers and sisters, Jesus said, Whosoever drinketh this water shall thirst again. That's true. Even if you have the best of the meal, which you want to have it and you eat it, and after that it's gone and you want to have it again. You know, I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, unlike these other so called pastors, since I'm in the thick and thin of the business world, I'm still engaged in the business world. I'm a businessman, I'm a professional. I'm an entrepreneur. I travel across the whole world. And I deal with people who are not know the Lord, who doesn't know the law. Unknown, heathens, Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, traditional Christians, I deal with them. But I can tell you, brothers and sisters, I have experienced so many different things when it comes to the material world. You mention about the food, you mention about the pleasures, you mention about the going to various locations, seeing nice places, staying in nice hotels. You know, brothers and sisters, in my 45 years, what we've gone, God has exposed me to many things that traditional pastor or a priest or a somebody can never be. I face temptation, I face trials, I face challenges. God has exposed me to those things. Some I have overcome, some I have failed and I repented. Every time Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the law, he fails, they are utterly cast out. I must not ashamed to say that I have fallen servants. Fallen means I have made mistakes but corrected myself. These things have happened. But, I must tell you, He held my hand in the last 45 years, lifted me up, exposed me, and till I am engaged, still I am in the thick and thin of this material world, 
the economic engagement and this worldly world. But this grace enabling me to overcome many challenges. Keep my life pure as possible. Align with the living God. Make my body as a temple of God. Offering my body as a living sacrifice. Not infusing various other stuff into my body. Not taking fire in my bosom and allowing my clothes to be born, burned. Not walking on the hot coals and get my feet. Feet um, burnt. I know that, brothers and sisters. God has taught me many lessons. What fellowship is like with darkness? Is it right with wrong? You know, David, Daniel said, I will not define myself with the dainty stuff of the king. Give me the plain things. I will not. Sadak, Mezak, and Abig, no, they were governors. And they are bound and put into the fiery furnace. And before that gave our other opportunity. Said, be it known unto you. Even if we don't, our God doesn't save, we will not bow down to this. Brothers and sisters, everlasting joy. Fullness of joy. And the places of heaven. So the temporary nature of this. He said, the, whatever you drink of this world, but the water which I shall give, will never thirst. And shall be in him a well of water springing into everlasting. This is what it talks about. Continuation of the joy of the Lord. Continuation of the joy of the Lord. Uh, not a temporary pleasure. And that's why the woman said, Give me this water that I may not thirst again. And then Jesus said, John chapter 4, verse 16 and 17 and 18. Jesus said unto, Go call thy husband and come thither. The woman said, I have no husband. Jesus said, Unto her thou well said, I have no husband. For thou hast five husbands, and the whom thou hast living now is not thy husband. Now you can see this woman is a kind of a explore all possibilities. Five husbands, and one who is living in she's adulterous life she is living in. She is living in pressure. Temporary pressure, but yet it's not there. Temporary pressure. Brothers and sisters, I have experienced temporary pleasure many times. As I told you, I have traveled across the world, I have go to the best places, eaten best food, and I have met many people. I have experienced temporary pleasure moment, but it's not lasting. It's just there and goes. And that's why Jesus said, John chapter 7, while he was there. In the day, in the last day and the great day, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow the rivers of living God. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they shall believe should receive the Holy Ghost, which was not given. Brothers and sisters, at that time, now, now, he is the Lamb of God. Where is the Lamb of God? At the right hand of God. On the cross, He completed it. On the cross, He completed it. He said, it is finished. And then He went to the bottom and redeemed the Old Testament saints. And the graves were opened and they all walked out, took over their bodies, and then went into a dimension of God. Now we are here. There is an element of dead in Christ. Who already face a partial redemption. Partial redemption I say because they are dead in Christ. They are own. But they are spirits and souls in the dimension of God. Their bodies are still in the soil. But we are. Body, soul and spirit, we are still here, living element. That's why brothers and sisters, 
at the right hand of God, the Lord Jesus Christ is fulfilling the completion of the redemption. That's why Jesus said, in my father's house, Jesus said very clearly here, in my father's house, many mansions, if it's not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. On the cross, he did that. He had done that. He, play, he prepared the place for me. Me for the place, really. Then he said, if I go and prepare the place, I'll come again, receive you unto myself. That's what he did. On the day of Pentecost. Jesus said, I shall be in you. I'm with you now. I shall be in you. I'm the comfort. Listen. So brothers and sisters, we are being sanctified for the sanctification to take place. Justification has to take place. And justification takes place by the efficacy of the blood, by the efficacy of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just shall live by faith. Justification. Justification. And when we are redeemed by the efficacy of the blood, the Holy Spirit fills us. Then Holy Spirit not only fills us, like the Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit. Nothing can be filled thereafter. And then you are sealed. Brothers and sisters, the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ is filled and sealed. You cannot infuse any other dogmas, teachings, rituals, uh, various funny things. What these charismatic Pentecostal Trimalamites put in. No. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. You are sealed. Once you are done that, you are led by the Holy Spirit. You are led by the Holy Spirit. How would the, led, uh, the Holy Spirit lead you? Because by this time, the word is in your heart, written in your mind. And revealing by the Spirit. Revealing. Because the word of God is in my heart. Written in my mind. And filled with the Holy Spirit. And led by the Holy Spirit. That's why he says. They are led by the Spirit. They are the sons of God. Therefore brothers and sisters. Psalm 51 verse 11. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing to the Zion. Those days Zion was known as Jerusalem. But holy Jerusalem, the Zion, the presence of God in the dimension of God. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord, redeemed of the Lord, shall return, come with singing unto Zion. An everlasting joy, not temporary, everlasting joy in their foreheads. Not in their hands, not in their legs, in their foreheads. In their head. Why? Their heart and the mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee. Brothers and sisters, I can tell you like Paul. He said, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. He had such confidence. Such confidence. When I go to the beach in the morning and even evening, I always says, Lord, I do certain breathing exercises. Inhale the breath and the oxygen is beautiful in the ocean, in the beach. And I always say, breath, this breath belongs to you not belong to me. It's owned by him. And always, secondly, I say, to be absent from this body, to be present with the Lord. Paul said, I know how to be a bound and how to be a best. He, know, he said, in other words, in our modern life, I know how to eat biryani and how to go without me and drinking water. Brothers and sisters, in this material world, 
there are so many comforts and pleasures and things like that. Sometimes we enjoy those, those pleasures. Sometimes we go through the difficulties. But our joy cannot be taken away. Our pleasure cannot be taken away. This is not a pleasure like that Samaritan woman had with five husbands. And the fifth, sixth one was, uh, I don't know whose husband she was living with. Jesus said, you know, sixth one is not yours. Pleasure. Not only committing adultery with a man or a woman, we are committing adultery with so many other things for the temporary pleasure. You know, brothers and sisters, you know, I live in uh, our lane, our house in Nehivala Beach, uh, Nehivala Albert Place. You know, there are a uh, number of guest houses, number of guest houses in front and uh, down our lane. Most of these guest houses are patronized by the couples. Sometimes old man come with a young girl. Sometimes old woman come with a young boy. Sometimes old women come with old men. Sometimes young women come with young men. They are not married. They are coming for a temporary pleasure. Sometimes people, they come in cars. They come in BMWs, luxury cars. Front of our house, there is guest house. We can see that. Temporary pleasure. Not only in the men and women that sexual pleasure but drinking eating gluttony all kinds of things like that is temporary but brothers and sisters the the redeemed of the law are different they are different to the extent the everlasting joy in their head because they are having a divine consciousness. They have the mind of Christ. As Jesus said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you are not alive. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, I in him. I am in the Father, Father in me. If you abide in me, my words abide. There is no other joy. Brothers and sisters, Jesus at the right hand of God. In the Old Testament saints, look for that. When they said about the right hand of God, He upholded me by His right hand. God can uphold us only by His right hand, by the redemption, which was fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. Redeemer, the Lamb. And once the redemption is done and finished and we become the redeemed of the Lord, owned by God, then we are sanctified because sanctification is also not a part-time thing. It's an ongoing thing. Because we are justified, we are sanctified, then we are glorified. We have been glorified. Glorification is taking place. Because justification has taken place. Sanctification is taking place. Divine consciousness is now, now upon us. The everlasting joy in our heads. Everlasting joy in our heads. Body, soul and the spirit now. Everlasting joy. So brothers and sisters, when will you experience this everlasting joy? And where? Today is the day and now is the time. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, today. We are now here. It's an ongoing thing. It's a continuous thing. It's a conscious thing. You don't take breaks from that. You don't take a, some sort of short break and uh, have a nap and come. No. It's a consistent, continuous thing. The everlasting joy. Not temporal joy. Everlasting. Lasting, lasting, everlasting. Do you have that, brothers and sisters? The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. When we are owned by Him, when we belong to Him, when He has purchased, that is His joy. Joy of the Lord. When we belong to Him 
and through the efficacy of the redemption by the efficacy of the redemption by the lamb the lamb's lights brothers and sisters whatever happens to our natural man irrespective of that that's why job job lost everything in the material world physical body was infected with sickness his wife came and said curse god and die he said naked i came naked i go this is bitter though the skin worm eat my body yet in my flesh i shall see god what kind of thing the everlasting joy he had that that joy nobody can steal it nobody can rob it you can't put inside a locker in a bank and protect it i know there are people who are putting good valuable stuff inside the locker and protect no everlasting joy cannot be put in a locker and protected it cannot be purchased in a supermarket it is written in your head only for the redeemed of the lord it is the redeemed of the lord that shall return the sign redeemed of the lord redeemed of the lord shall return with singing everlasting joy in his presence is the fullness of joy at his right hand pleasures of him what pleasure is that than being redeemed what pleasure is than than being redeemed when you are redeemed you are filled you are sealed then you are lit because the word of god in your heart in your mind it's written you have divine consciousness entire body blood circulation now powered by the efficacy of the word efficacy of his spirit efficacy of blood jesus christ you become owned by god your god's property you are a son of god you are a daughter of god you are the bride of christ you are the temple of the living god and you offer your body as a living sacrifice that's the joy fullness of joy when your body is offered as a living sacrifice because the word is in your heart written in your mind divine god your body is offered as a living sacrifice we are not conforming to this world have been transformed by renewing of your mind continuously the everlasting joy is there it is only exclusive to the bride of the lord jesus christ in his presence the fullness of joy at his right hand pleasure for me pleasure for him only for the bride of the lord jesus christ now now not tomorrow not when you go there no you experience that you have that fullness there's no emptiness there's no sadness whatever happens you may lose and you may gain but the joy of the lord cannot be stolen cannot be taken cannot be tampered with it's there because it's in your heart i feel it that's the bright that's the true church she continuously lives in the presence of god continuously because the lamp of god lights continuously the purpose and the presence the effectiveness of the redemption is being evoked continuously in the bright always recognizing i am the redeemed of the lord and that wonderful more feeling that experience that conviction that i am redeemed by the efficacy of the blood filled with the holy spirit seal now let gives a wonderful joy which is called the fullness of joy 
and the flesh forever. Let's pray. Wonderful Holy Father, we are indeed thankful to you. Your grace is that is upon us. We are in your presence. In your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand, the place of evermore. It is only meant for the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are immensely thankful to you. Holy Father, we commit every brother and sister who is hearing this message to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all, brothers and sisters.